seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay, get ready for worship, get ready for aerobics. Here we go! Hiya, my name's Jo and we're going to do a bit of a warm-up when we do our session together today. Um, get yourself a space um, and so that you've got somewhere to move. We're just going to warm up, we're not going to do anything too, too uh, mad, we'll just uh, do some stretches to start with. So we're going to stretch that way, stretch this way, stretch up as high as you can and down and just keep walking on the spot and then we'll just do a stretch to one side stretch to the other side and then step and then really really fast and then step really really fast and then we'll go to the side music to the side to the side down really really fast punch punch and really fast we're warming up now. To the side, to the side, up, and then down, down, up, down, up, down. To the other side, up, down, and then walk, walk on the spot. And we'll go forward and back, forward and back, forward and back, and then on the spot. Ready, fast, ready, fast. Let's go to the side, to the side. You go as fast or as slow as you want. We're just warming up to the side and we're trying to keep up to the music. And then on the spot, really, really fast. And we'll do some lunges. One, two, and lunge. And lunge. There we go. And then we go a bit faster. And really, really fast. And then we'll swing. More punching. Yay. Oh, about some more punching. Let's go. And then we'll slow down. So we're going to come to an end. Just walking. Just walking. Stretch yourself. 
And welcome to uh, our season finale, season two finale of Something for Sunday. I hope you got yourselves a nice drink. We've got a brew to keep us going through this. Mm. Um, I hope you got your favourite teddy. We've got our favourite teddies there. And Jo's got her little bunny. And I hope you got your favourite toy. So I've got, Is it? does it class as a toy? Well, yeah. A toy is something you enjoy. Surely, mm, and this yeah. is a toy. So this is um, last birthday for me. Uh, my family bought me some um, tea lights that can go in water. So this is a little jar, jam jar, and it's got some little colour changing, water friendly lights, <laughs> which is really cool. So I have that yeah. next to me, and it just it brightens my day, and reminds me of my birthday. And Joe's got it's Lightning McQueen. I'm sure there's a few fans out there, and Lightning this one is McQueen. his eyes kind of move around a little bit, but he's. Um, yeah, 3D eyes. Yeah, that's it. So he's really cool. 3D eyes. So um, as ever, we're joined by a little host of technical supporters. Um, Stephen is directing off camera and on camera. We have got Nathan and we've got Peter. Nathan is making it all happen, which is awesome. And um, Peter, what's your favourite toy today? What have you got, my little man? Uh, Lego Batman. Lego Batman. Le Lego does feature. So there you go, Lego Batman. And you got what's the little character? What's that one? Oh. Is that Joker? Yeah. Yeah, little Joker. So there you Joker. go. Oh, brilliant. That's um, that's Peter's favourite toy. Uh, so we're going to carry on. Yeah, we're going to pray. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this opportunity to be together wherever we are um, to, to meet with you and learn more about you. Would you, Lord, speak to each of us wherever we are, whatever time it is, um, that you would just reach into our hearts mm. and bring us closer to you Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So let's see what's coming up. Coming up today, our focus on something for Sunday is being Benaya brave. Being brave is good, but Benaya brave is something else. Benaya did many brave things, and we will hear about some of them in our Bible reading from 2 Samuel in the Old Testament. Let me tell you this, there is a lion involved. In our memory verse, we encourage you to keep Romans 8 verse 31b to mind in everyday life, because if God is for us, 
who can be against us? In Andy's Preachy Teach, Andy will tell us more about his all-time favourite Bible hero, Benaiah, our brave fighter who took on a lion. Andy will help us to be brave like Benaiah and will ask us what lion we need to face. And finally, in our family prayer time, we remember Psalm 23, especially the part where it says in verse 4, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Because we give God our fears. God cares for us and he helps us through difficulties and fears. With God, we can be brave too. So when we started something for Sunday, um, season one, many episodes ago now, um, I got very, very excited about doing a guy called Benaiah. Now, mm. Benaiah is an amazing character from the Old Testament, and this is a scripture reading all about this amazing man from Kabzeel. So it's geography and it's Bible studies too. <laughs> Today's scripture, we're reading from 2 Samuel chapter 23, verses 20 to 23, and we're going to use the International Children's Bible version. Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, was a brave fighter from Kabzeel. He did many brave things. He killed two of the best soldiers from Moab. He also went down into a pit while it was snowing. There he killed a lion. Benaiah killed a big Egyptian. The Egyptian had a spear in his hand, but Benaiah only had a club. Benaiah grabbed a spear from the Egyptian's hand, and then Benaiah killed him with his own spear. These were the brave things that Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, did. He was as famous as the three. He received more honour than the thirty, but he did not become a member of the three. David made him leader of his bodyguard. For our memory verse, we've got a really sweet and simple, quite short um, verse to remember. It's from Romans 8 and it's half the verse 31. And it says, if God is for us, who can be against us? So I think although this is short, it's such a powerful um, verse for us all to remember. So I really recommend that you take this one to heart and keep it there ready to help you through the hard times. So Romans 8 verse 31b, if God is for us, who can be against us there's a question mark there if God is on our side then God is bigger and greater than anybody else so no one else can come against us because God is so great and so powerful so Romans 8 verse 31 b if God is for us who can be against us let's take a word away Romans 8 31 b if God is for us who can be against us let's take that one away Romans 8 31 B if God is for us who can be against us brilliant Wow, absolutely amazing uh, verse there to really remember and take with you through, Very encouraging. through life. It is, isn't it? It's absolutely brilliant. So do encourage you to remember that one and use it every day. Um, we're now at this time for Andy B's Preachy Teach. And Andy is going to share something of his own experiences and life um, and sharing about his all-time hero, isn't it, Benaiah. So uh, listen into this now. So today for Andy B's Preachy Teacher, we're going to be taking a look at a guy called Benaiah. Um, He's probably my all-time favourite hero from scripture after Jesus, of course. Um, But Benaiah is an amazing man. Doesn't appear loads of time. Um, I don't think I've ever heard him mentioned, referenced. I don't think I've heard this piece of scripture read out. I've never read anything on it. Um, Except for a guy called Mark Batterson, who wrote a book about part of this. And it's this little teeny tiny bit of a verse that inspired his book. 
and it's verse 20, and this is about Benaiah. He struck down two of Moab's best men. He also went down into a pit on a snowy day and killed a lion. And Benaiah wasn't finished there. He's killed two of Moab's finest. He's killed a lion in a snowy pit. We'll come back to that. And he also struck down a huge Egyptian with the Egyptian spear. Wrestled it from his hands and killed him. Lots of death. Who said the Old Testament was boring? And this is all about Benaiah. Now, Benaiah was a man um, who clearly was a fighter. Uh, we think about King David, who later on we're told at the end of verse 23, and David put him in charge of his bodyguard. Well, that's referring to King David. And if you're a king and everybody wants to kill you and attack you, you'd have a very, very good bodyguard system set up. Think secret service without the ties. But who do you want to head up this group of amazing people who are going to protect you? Well, someone who's chased a lion into a snowy pit probably would be top of the list. If he could do that, he'll probably protect you from anybody who might try and kill you. So Benaiah's past became important to his future. And Benaiah's past became part of our future because King David is such an instrumentally important part of our Bible reference. So Benaiah is an amazing dude. Now, 25 years ago, I bought this Bible. Um, I use it for almost all the teaching that I ever do and all the preaching. It comes out of that Bible. An amazing um, pastor called Colin Carson who helped me buy the Bible because I couldn't afford it. And I was on something called the Pace Project, which is now an international um, effort to get into um, children's lives with the gospel. It's amazing. Run by a guy called Paul Gibbs, who's great. So at the end of my year of Pace Project, we had a day when I said, well, what are we going to do? We're going to get this guy along and he's going to prophesy over each of you. There's about, I don't know, 35, 40 people in a room, a church in a, a, most, in a place called Moston in Manchester. And this guy came in, lovely, quiet, soft-spoken bloke, and there were 35-ish people in the room. Now, I'm from a Baptist tradition. I believe in the power currently of the Holy Spirit, but this was a little bit freaky for me. Prophesying over each of us? No, I don't think so. Anyway, this guy starts and he goes all around the room and he starts speaking really specific prophecies into people's lives. I chatted to quite a few afterwards. Every single word that this guy said was relevant, different and very specific to that person's life. I'm the only person he spoke to three times that day. Not because I'm amazing, kind of the opposite. So he's going around the room and I'm thinking, oh, what's he going to say to me? This is kind of interesting. Outside my comfort zone, but in a really good way, seeing people just being impacted by the love of Jesus Christ in their lives through this guy softly speaking over each of us. He stands in front of me. We're all sitting in chairs at desks as we've been doing some work and stuff. He stands over me and says, you're more than you think you are. So I look back and think, that's nice. So he says again, you're more than you think you are. And I'm thinking he said it twice. Why is he saying it twice? I got it the first time. And then he says it a third time. You are more than you think you are. I wrote it down in my Bible. I cried. I was very emotional. It was an amazingly powerful day. And those words have impacted me a lot. Because I really struggled with confidence. I didn't believe I was particularly good at anything. I wouldn't amount to anything. Um, I thought I was a bit rubbish at everything really. Not a great childhood. So I didn't feel great about myself or anything. And yet here's this guy speaking three times over me. You're more than you think you are. And I've used those words many, many times. Children are more than they think they are. Psalm 8 verse 2. From the mouths of infants and nursing babies, you have established a stronghold on account of your adversaries in order to silence the enemy and the avenger. That's the CSB version. Um, you can read the ESV. You can read the NIV. It's still very powerful. Jesus used these words in a really insulting way, actually, at some religious leaders in the temple. Jesus is walking around. Some children come along, say, yeah, this is Jesus. He's Lord. He's amazing. Start worshipping him. The religious leaders are like, shut up, you silly little children. Go away. How dare you speak in the temple? Jesus then says, do you not know this scripture from Psalm 8 too? It's extremely offensive these guys would have memorized it for years jesus is making a point as he often does have you not heard do you not know do you not know that these children will silence the enemy children are far more than they think they are that's why i love ministering with and to children um, because they're amazing they're absolutely fantastic their love for jesus is brilliant we know from secular sources that children have a natural propensity to believing in our designer creator god it's awesome. 
and yet we put them down all the time. And I've been put down a lot. I'd had some great opportunities in church. I was leading worship three, 350 people, um, really big band, maybe 25, 30 people in the band sometimes. And I was the worship leader from the age of 15. It was an amazing experience. And that was great. But I was put down in lots of other areas in my life. Didn't do very well in school. What am I going to do when I get older? Don't know. So those words, you're more than you think you are, have comforted me and carried with me for 25 years now. What does your more than you think you are mean? Well, Benaiah knew he was more than he thought he was. Because Benaiah chased a lion. I mean, get that. He chases, not being chased. He's chasing the lion into a snowy pit. So a big dark bowl. And he's lugging it in there. There's a lion. There's snow. It's slippy. It's ice. And Benaiah attacks the lion. That's insane. But what an amazing curriculum vitae extra that'll be. I've got these GCSEs and these A-levels. And, and by the way, I killed a lion in a snowy pit. And if you're going for a job of bodyguard, you're going to get picked. Which gets me thinking. Jesus loves children. Always makes a point of going out of his way of encouraging the children to him. Psalm 8 2, he quotes it at the religious leaders because they're putting these children, oh yeah, go away, just get out, get out of the way. I don't believe, not controversially, I don't think, I don't believe that children are treated much differently these days. And I'm a children's minister, so I'm going to say that and yeah, I think that's true. Nothing's changed in 2,000 years, there's nothing new under the sun. Children are still put down. And we don't trust our children. We do in this family. Our children get to do amazing things. We trust them with all sorts of things because we know that they can do greater things than we can do. You are more than you think you are, spoke to me. And I'll share those words with you because it's relevant for whoever's watching this at any point. You're more than you think you are. And with Christ in your life, you become ever more so. Benaiah went down into a pit on a snowy day and killed a lion. So what's your lion that you've got to chase and kill? Maybe it's not actual lion, that would be illegal. However, what are the things in your life and my life where God is challenging us to go a little bit further and to trust him? We've got some big decisions as a family to make in the next few months. So what have we got to do? Well, we go back to God and say, what do we do, Lord? <laughs> That'll be a timer from the alarm. That's quite funny. So what is it you've got to do? What's the lion you've got to chase that I've got to chase? What is God calling us to do to trust him more? Trust me trusting God more as well. So what's the line you've got to take on? Go away, read Psalm 82. Read 2 Samuel 23, 20. But no, amazing book. If you can get a hold of the, the book by Mark Batterson, we'll put a link in later. That's an amazing book. But where is God asking you to step forwards boldly, knowing that he is calling you to do it? We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. doesn't mean we can do everything. It means if God is calling us and equipping us, then we can do it, knowing he will help us to get it done. So what's the line that God's asking you to get done, to chase after? Heavenly Father, thank you that you are with us every day of our lives, no matter where we're at. The good things and the bad things, you're still there for us to help us. Help us to trust you more. Help us to trust in you like Benaiah did, knowing that he was doing something great. And whether we can see what we're doing, the effects directly or indirectly to know and trust that you'll redeem every situation of our life so that we can follow you, so that we can do more amazing things than we ever dreamed possible because we are more than we think you are when we have you in our lives. Amen. For our family prayer time, we thought it would be a good uh, idea to give our fears to God. Um, it's quite clear in the Bible, um, it, it tells us we should not fear and we shouldn't worry and we can give our problems, our difficulties to God. And so as a family, from time to time, as we go through life, it's a good idea to give those things um, that we struggle with to God. So we thought to start with, as a family, we could read Psalm 23. You could read the whole of the psalm or some of it or take in turns as a family and then each go round and give those fears, those difficulties to God. So let's let's try that. Let's pray. Father, thank you that we can come to you and you will help us with our fears and our difficulties, the things that we struggle with. Father, would you help us with the fears that we have today? The Lord is my shepherd 
I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Father, would you help us as a family as we struggle through these difficult times during lockdown and COVID restrictions? Father, it's really difficult and can be quite isolating and lonely as we can't meet with our friendly, fa- friends and family and the people we care about. Father, would you help us uh, through this difficult time and help us to know that we're not alone, that you are with us. Father, as, as we worry about the future, the future of our jobs and uh, and the future of what's going to happen in, in, in the end of this year and next year and how long these problems with COVID will go on, please, Father, we give you your our fears about the future and ask you to help us. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Wow, lots there in our um, session today uh, to help us be brave uh, and uh, to to be strong and and, and allow God to help us uh, with our fears and our difficulties. Some brilliant scripture. Psalm 23 is my fallback position when I'm going through some tough times. I just read that scripture. It's a very, very good psalm. Yeah, it does lift me. And and wow, that stuff you're talking about, facing your own lions. We often talk about facing Goliath, Mm. but I I don't know which is worse now, Goliath or a lion. They're both hard, but we do have our lions things that we need to face we need to deal with and sometimes we need to face our fears but we're not alone God is with us so we hope you've been encouraged by this episode we've come to the end now and the end of our episodes for this year for 2020 isn't Mm -hmm. it so we need to say goodbye to you but I must tell you this is the book that Andy was talking about um, in a pit with a lion on a snowy day Um, and it says how to survive and thrive when opportunity roars. And I'll just read the back for you. It says, what if the life you really want and the future God wants for you is hiding right now in our biggest problem, your worst failure, your greatest fear? So really recommend that book. Uh, it does, uh, does shine a it's light. A, it's a brilliant book. Yeah. <laughs> it's really good. So yeah, this is, this is the, end, the end of season two. This is our mm. season two finale. And then the last one for 2020, we'll be back in 2021. We're going to do a bit of a reformat and all sorts mm. of things, which is exciting. So this is our last something for Sunday for this season and for this year. However, we've got more things coming up through December. Um, we haven't got any graphics yet because I haven't done it, but we've got a Chris Stingle, which we're going to mm. do nearer to Christin- um, Christmas time, mm. which we'll do a live broadcast like the light party, same thing. And Joe's um, putting some stuff together for Crafty Christmas. Mm. We're not quite sure what it's going to look, but in... <laughs> look out for that in the next week or two we'll start getting some advertising yeah. and graphics out for that um, and as ever as this is something for sunday last episode of this, the year in season it's also going to be the same time today that we have our last something for sunday light which is i suppose more youth orientated or mm. if you want to go deeper with god it's a lot shorter the boys our old two boys steve and nathan do some great stuff for that yeah. So that's something for Sunday Light. That'll be our last episode as well, which we'll link to that also. And one last thing just to plug is our Little Blessings Online. Again, it goes out on Monday, tomorrow. That'll be our last one of this season, another season finale, and another year finale. And mm-hmm. that'll return in the new year. So thanks for joining us through these two seasons so far. It's really exciting. Um, we will see you very, very soon. God willing. Mm. Um, so there's lots of stuff you can catch up on. So have a great rest of your day whenever you're watching this. Um, shall I pray us out? And- yeah. Let's pray us out. Heavenly Father, thank you for um, uh, the, the, the amazing things that you want to teach us through Scripture. It's a living mm. word. It's alive today. And we can look at a verse for 20 years and just get something new out of it every single morning. Mm. So I thank you for the um, ability we have to understand Scripture and to read it and explore it and see how it can apply to our lives. Father, help each one of us now watching this whenever to know that you are there walking beside us whatever lions we face Mm. we know that you're going to be with us and we can take them on knowing that we've got Mm. the god of creation standing right behind us and that's a good thing to have behind us so Mm. thank you father god amen amen have a great rest of your day thanks for being with us bye for now bye stay up to date with a berry punch 
You can follow us online, www.berrybunch.family. We're on facebook.com forward slash berrybunchfamily. You can also find us on Instagram and YouTube as well.